Welcome to Financial Buzz Market Weekly. I'm R.K. Walker here at the New York Stock Exchange bringing you a review of this week's stock market. Turbulence has increased yet again this week with the volatility index known as the VIX hovering around 25 while just over three months ago the VIX was sitting at historical lows around 10 and a half. On Monday, the S&P 500 closed below its 200-day moving average amid weakening world economic reports and concern over Ebola. Airlines were down sharply as investors feared travel bans might be instituted to contain the spread of the virus. On Tuesday, things calmed down a bit with the indexes closing about the same. However, energy stocks continued declining as crude oil prices slid down. On Wednesday, retail sales for September were released and they were down 0.3% month-to-month below expectations and the Empire State Manufacturing Survey for October slowed significantly to 6.2 compared to the prior month's five-year high of 27.5. This too was unexpected. Markets were down significantly, however, they recovered much of their losses later in the day. On Thursday, jobless claims for the week ending October 11th were down 23,000 to 264,000. This is its lowest level since April of 2000, but this news didn't affect the market much. However, St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank President James Bullard's statements that the Federal Reserve should consider postponing the end of its bond purchase program helped halt another downward spike by the end of the day. On Friday, housing starts for September rose 6.3% over August to a little over a million units. Altogether, the S&P 500 is down nearly 10% from its high point. However, during early Friday, stocks rallied strongly on hopes that the Fed will continue its easy money policy as well as some positive earnings reports. Now let's take a look at some stocks. Amazon.com shares slumped as the market continues to take a beating from fears of a global economic slowdown and the impact of Ebola. The company also announced plans to open their first brick and mortar store in New York's Herald Square with two additional stores to be located on the West Coast in San Francisco and Sacramento. Citigroup stocks surged on Tuesday after the U.S. lender released their third quarter earnings, reporting profits increased by 7% to $3.4 billion, or $1.15 per share, on total revenues of $19.6 billion, beating profit estimates of $1.12 per share. Citigroup also announced plans of leaving the consumer banking sector in 11 different markets in order to consolidate operations and increase returns. Bank of America stunned investors and analysts Wednesday when the U.S. bank released their third quarter earnings. The company managed to report a profit in spite of the fact that the bank settled a multi-billion dollar deal with federal and state authorities. Bank of America earned a net income of $168 million on total revenue of $21.4 billion, beating analyst estimates, and also reported four out of five of their divisions sustained increases in revenue and income year over year. Shares of the world's largest video streaming service, Netflix, fell as much as 25% Thursday following the release of their 2014 third quarter financials. The stock plunged over 115 to 332, attributed to lower subscriber growth, which Netflix says was the result of recent increases in monthly service fees. In addition, television network HBO plans on launching a competing service in 2015 with other networks to follow suit. This is Financial Buzz Market Weekly. I'm R.K. Walker, and I'll see you again next week.